In this exercise, we are going to be working with values. We're going to create a nine-step value scale, first in black and white. And then we're going to do the same thing for the other colors that are on our palette. One of the things I want you to look for and to notice is the way that those colors, especially well, the ones that are transparent dye colors, will intensify to a certain point when white is added and then when too much white is added they'll begin to dull. And the only way to really understand that is to work through it by mixing it yourself. There's some colors that are not going to intensify at all. Those are the opaque colors. I would strongly recommend that you do it for all of the colors that you're using for the course. But I'll leave that up to you and experiment with it a little bit. Notice that the colors that you use, if they're a different brand than what I'm using, are not going to fit into the value scale in exactly the same places. So be aware of that. You're going to have to adjust and compare and look at the color relationships with what you're using. So let's start with our black and white. So for our color value scale with the black and white, obviously the black is going to be the number nine, the darkest dark, and white will be the lightest light, and then we'll want to have some middle gray in between. To mix middle gray, I think I've said this before, but I'm going to say it several times because it doesn't really sink in until you've done it enough. To mix, you want to start with the lighter value and then go to the darker, adding the darker one in. So I've got the lighter one there and I'm going to take just a little bit of black at a time until I can get to a middle gray value. Something that is roughly halfway between white and black. You do not get that by mixing half black and half white. The pigment in the black has lots more tinting strength than the white. It won't take nearly as much as you think. And notice I'm not mixing a great big huge pile. We don't need a whole lot. We're going to use that to mix some of the other values. But you don't need an enormous amount of it. It needs just a touch more black get to that nice solid middle gray value. There we go. So that's going to be our middle gray. Now the way to do a value scale and to do it effectively is going to be to work from the outside edges in. That's why I did the black first and then the middle gray and then obviously you also have white on the other end. Then I'm going to take some of that middle gray and make one that's halfway between middle gray and white and one that's halfway between middle gray and black. And to mix the one that's halfway, let's get some white down here that's going to stand just for the purely white. So I'm visually trying to get halfway in between those two values. And I didn't need to remix the gray. I can take just a little bit of what was in that pile for the middle gray. And that's still too dark. Don't forget to wipe your mixing knife. And I always mix with a knife even if you're going to paint with large brushes. Painting with large, large brushes is fine, but to mix paint, you really need to use the mixing knife. That flat-edged number 81 is a great mixing knife. Makes it easy to mix the paint. Don't mix with a brush. That doesn't work really well, and it wastes an awful lot of paint. For those of you who are worried about how much paint you use, that's where a lot of it goes. It still needs a little bit more white. Not much, but just a little bit more to be halfway between white and middle gray. And 
that looks about right. So that would be halfway between middle gray and white. So let's think about that in terms of numbers. White is number one. Middle gray would be number five. And number nine is black, which means that that light gray is going to be a number three. And now we're going to mix the number seven, the one that's halfway between middle gray and black. So this time we're just going to add a little bit of black to this middle gray that we already have. Take a tiny little bit of that black. Remember, go easy on adding the black to any mixture. It goes way further than you think it's going to. Very quickly, because of how strong black is, we have something that's about halfway in between. So I'm going to take what's on my knife right here and put it right here so it's in between middle gray, which is number five, and the dark gray, which is number seven. And I'm going to lighten that up because now that's a number six. So I'm trying to get something that goes halfway between middle gray and dark gray. So you see how I'm working from the outside in, always halfway between two values. If you're always going halfway between two values, it becomes very easy to make even increments. You can see how those are too close right now still. It's really easy to adjust if you need to, but you just want to get those even steps. Okay, now I've gone too light there. Got too much white. So that's now almost middle gray. So I need to take a little tiny bit of the black. Just a touch. Touch of this one that's next to it, it's darker. It's getting there. It needs just a tiny, tiny little bit more with the next one down. Now, I'm going to zoom in on this in a sec so that you can see. The difference there, I think it needs a little bit tiny more dark still. And really go slow on adding the dark. It doesn't take much at all. And you'll go darker faster than you think. Okay, it's still not halfway. It's closer to the middle gray than it is to the dark gray. So I can take some of the dark gray and add it. Compare. Still need a tiny little bit more dark. Not much though. There we go. I don't want to go any further because that's going to take it too far. So here we have our number six. To get to number seven, number eight, which is halfway between seven and nine, get some white and some black. Okay, that's about the same right now, almost exactly the same as our number seven. So I need to take it just a little bit darker. To make it a number eight. A little bit more. 
more black. There we go. About halfway in between. So now we need this upper end of the value scale filled in. So we need our number two and our number four. So to get there, I'm going to take some of the number three, put it in between. And we're going to lighten that up. So we have something that's about halfway in between the number one, which is white. And then number three. This is the one I think that most people have the hardest time with. They make the number two and the number three too dark. Remember you want even increments. And there we go. Take that left over, I'll put it right there. And take just a little bit of the middle gray. Now we're going for halfway in between number three and number five. Get a little bit more of that number three right here into the middle. I'm getting them a little too close. Move that up here. Mainly I just want you to be able to see the difference and that's almost there. There we go. That one may have tipped it a little too far. So the first step to being able to see color and light is really to begin to be able to see the color and the different aspects of the color. So now I have it all mixed, I'm going to put it on a board that I prepared just for this exercise. So on this board, I have created a chart that goes nine across and then goes down for the different value, different colors, the pigments that we're using. And so I'm going to put a dab of each of those values that we just mixed into this chart. Move these paints to the sides so they don't need to all be right there, right in the middle. They can all go up here to live while we're working. So we're not quite on top of each other. Here we go. Let's get our white first. This is what I mean by a dab. I'm not putting a whole pile on. I just want to get a dab. I just want to have a reference point here. So that was number one. Here's number two. Put it on thickly enough that you're not getting paint on there so thin that it begins to um, show the board through. So make sure you're not scraping the paint on super thinly. Here's number four. And number five, which is, remember, our champ middle gray. Number six. And notice because we worked from the outside in, we've got fairly even changes here in value. So that was number six. Becomes number seven. And 
and number eight. And last but not least, our number nine. So there we have an even value scale. And if anything, look at it after you put it onto the whiteboard. You can see that our number two is still a little bit on the dark side. So I can take some white. I can go in here and mix it with what I had for number two. And I can go in and I can adjust it. I can lighten it up a little bit because it was too dark. And adjust number three as well. Just start to make a giant old mess. Or it's evenly covered there. There, that's a better gradation. So you can make a little slight adjustment if you need to afterwards. And put that board aside for the moment. And then we're going to get out one of our other colors. So I want to show you at least two of the colors on the palette, how I want us to proceed. Then I'm going to leave it up to you how many of them you do, but I would strongly recommend that you do all of the colors that you're working with for this time. I am going to look at what we've got on our palette and pull out our lightest, one of our lightest colors, which is Indian Yellow. In my dirty paint rag. And I'm going to put some Indian Yellow right down here. Now, what I want us to do is to establish what that value is right when it first comes out of the tube. So to do that, you need to look at your chart. and take a sample of that Indian yellow, or you can even just hold the chart next to it. Squint your eyes. That Indian yellow is darker than you think it is. It is not a number two, as you can tell right here. It's almost not a number three. It's really kind of almost a number four. Let's see where it falls on that chart. Take some onto the knife, onto the back of the knife, and hold it up to the chart so that you can squint your eyes and look at it to identify the value. And you'll see that that's a pretty dark color. And I have to stare at it for a minute myself to make a decision. It's almost in between three and four, but I'm going to put it in four. And the reason is that Indian yellow, when it comes out, is so dark. And I think that pretty well matches with number four. Your Indian Yellow, if you're using a different brand than I am, may not fit right in there. It may be either lighter or darker. But it's going to be somewhere in that zone of three to four. Then I'm going to add enough white to that Indian Yellow to bring it up to... I want to get a number three and a number two and a number one. Remember, Indian yellow will intensify as you add white. So 
let's take about half of that and go next door. Don't forget to wipe that knife as you go. And let's get some more white in there. See if we can go halfway between those last two colors. Still needs more white. Halfway between the one that I just mixed with white and white itself. a little lighter. May even need to take some just pure white. Mix a little bit of this with it. There we go. Okay, when I did that, now we have our other two values. as I go. Of the Indian yellow. And white is still going to be white. If you wish, you can make a slight tint. Just the tiniest little bit to it so that the white is just warmed and put that in that lightest tip top spot. So there we have our value chart for Indian Yellow. And notice how dark that original Indian Yellow is. Now we're going to do the same thing for another color and see where it falls. So our next one down was the Azo Coral Alizarin Orange, the Transparent Orange color. We can see how much darker it is when it comes out of the tube. Again, another transparent color that is fairly dark. And we're going to have to figure out where to put that one as it comes out of the tube onto that chart. Colors are darker than we tend to think that they are. So again, hold up your value scale next to that color. And it looks like it's at least middle gray. The next one down from Indian Yellow, if not, I think it's a little lighter than the number six. So let's try putting it in the number five slot. And try not to scrape it out too thin. I want it to go in there in its mass tone. For one thing, I want you to see how close that is to the Napthal Red, Fanchon Red that we're using. So that's our alizarin orange, azo orange, azo coral. Again, it depends on which brand you're using and which one of those particular colors where it's going to fall. Yours might be a little to the left or a little to the right. But it is distinctly darker than Indian yellow. Now let's add some white to that. And we're going to go for something that is halfway between white and that value. So here's our white, and if our azo is a number five, 
Mixing halfway in between is going to a number three. It's not going to take very much. Let's see. Scooch this up a little bit. Um, it's not going to take very much of it to turn that darker. And look how yellowy it goes when it gets mixed with white. Almost like Indian yellow. That's not halfway in between. We still need a little bit more. It needs to be halfway in value between white and the original color. So it needs to be about a number three. And that's where it is right now. So if we take that and put it on our chart at number three, It is really similar to the Indian yellow. A little bit more orangey. Let's take some of that and put it here. And some next door to become number two. Actually, just start with white on that one and add it gradually. Okay, get the one that's halfway in between. The alizarin orange number five and the tent that is a number three. I'm going to add until it gets right at that halfway in between mark. I'm going to take all of that. There we go. Here's our number four. Now, to get our number two, we're going to take white and just a tiny little bit of the number three. And we got a little too much. I'll put that off to the side. It will become gray later. So if you get too much, don't keep trying to mix too much white into it. You'll get this huge pile of paint. always add a little bit more dark back. That is almost it. Here darker. There's our number two. Okay, and remember I said you could lightly tint the number one. It really is going to take very tiny amounts of that very strong color to tint that. Okay, there's an almost one. It's just barely warmed. And let's add those to our chart. So, our number one, our number two, we got our number three on there. We just need our number four. So there we have our second color and where it falls on the value scale. Now let's go to the Fanchon Red. So here we have our middle value blue. So let's hold that up to our middle gray. You can see it squint your eyes and the line difference between them disappears. It's significantly lighter than the number 
So middle gray is what we have there. So we have a middle value blue. Then we have the next one up, which is going to be a number four. And here is our number six, which is going to need to darken up a lot. Now it's right at the middle. Actually, let's move this over and make it a number seven so that we're halfway in between. Or actually, let's just leave it right where it is. Give it a mark for number seven. Need a little bit more blue. There we go. And we can see that this is the next one up from our ultramarine, but there's not enough of a difference between these two. So we're going to darken up that number six just a little bit so that there's a bigger difference between number five and number six. So then we need to some white to get the rest of our color our tints of the blue on here. So here's five, here's four, we need three and two. So let's give ourselves a pile of white there and a pile of white there. Take some of this. and add it to the number three. Take some of that and add it to the number two, because that number three really looks very similar to number two, what two would be right now. That's a pretty good two, but number three is too light. So I can go to the number four, pull a little bit off, Darken our number three up so that it's halfway between and we have some nice transitions. Again, remember we want change between each one. There's number three. And then we can lightly tint. Very lightly tint our number one. Okay, let's get those onto the board. So our number one. Our number two. Four. Yeah. 
which needs to be a hair darker. And I can pull a little bit more blue into it. So like I said, sometimes you're not going to see the differences that you need to make, the changes you need to make, without it being on there. Let me get off that little bit of extra paint there. So feel free to adjust after you even have it onto the chart. So now you can begin to see what happens as you add white to colors that are transparent, even the ones that are opaque. Fanchon's a little bit opaque. As soon as it reaches that tipping point, it begins to dull out as well as lighten. So for example, right here, the number three of the alizarin orange is still a great intense color but by the time it gets to number two it's very very dull and no longer has very much intensity whereas we can see that the fanchon red begins to lose intensity at the number four and that the ultramarine blue begins to lose intensity somewhere between five and four so this is the purpose of the exercises, so that you begin to see what happens to your colors as you mix white. It is absolutely necessary at times to mix white, and white gives you intense colors when you're working with dye colors, but you need to know how far is too far. So what I want you to do is fill in the rest of your chart with the rest of the colors that we're working with during the course. Post your chart on Facebook. Share it with the group if you would like, especially if you have a question about the values. Thank you for being here, and I can't wait to see what you do with your values and with your color variations.